Hey, I'm Patrick Murphy Racy. Uh, the subject of this video is going to be a little different than what I typically talk about. Um, I usually talk about Sony. This time it's going to be about uh, flash and specifically something called flash duration. Um, not all strobes are created equal and the one kind of um, element that seems like nobody really cares about is the amount of time that the light is actually lit and turns off. And what I do um, in sports photography, flash duration is everything. So if I'm going to shoot volleyball or hockey or basketball on strobes, um, I need really, really fast light. That is to say, light that's going to turn on and turn off very quickly and therefore freeze the action. Um, one concept that's really hard for people to get is the fact that if you are, if your strobes are five or six or seven or more stops over ambient light, uh, then your effective shutter speed becomes the speed of the flash instead of the speed that you have set in the camera. Flash duration is also important for working uh, even in studio. Um, when you see those really cool beer ads where they're pouring, uh, or Coca-Cola or Pepsi, whatever, when they pour and they're doing slow motion, um, if you're going to try to capture a pour, for instance, uh, you've got to have extremely short flash duration in order to accomplish that. So it's not just sports photography that requires this. Um, at this point in the video, you're probably going, should I keep watching this guy? Do I care about this? If you're using strobes to shoot pictures of people, you should, and here's why. The effect of sharpness that can be perceived is best perceived uh, with short flash duration lights or extremely high shutter speeds. So if you're outdoors uh, and you're shooting available light, you can just go way up to, you know, eight thousandth of a second or higher, and then you can shoot pictures of people and really see if your glass is sharp. But man, if you are shooting in a studio situation or you're using lighting, um, this is a place where you're going to have an issue if you don't have good lighting. All right, so on with the test. So just to review very quickly, flash duration is the amount of time that a flash is actually lit or turns on and off. Flash duration is determined by many things, like internal voltage of the pack or head, the types of capacitors that are used, the flash, flash tube fill pressure, and how the power is controlled. To a great extent, flash duration determines how sharp your images appear when you look at them on your computer. And the shorter the flash duration, the more action is stopped. The longer the flash duration, the more blur on a moving subject that is introduced. So... The way a unit's built and designed by the manufacturer affects its flash duration. So if a flash unit reduces its power by reducing voltage, it will have the shortest flash duration at full power. And this is how all Elenchrom monoblocks are made. White lightnings, as a converse, are made the opposite way. Um, so the, the more you turn a white lightning down, the shorter the flash duration gets. Some units have special speed modes where fewer capacitors are used to allow voltage to remain high and give shorter flash duration as you lower the power. Godox, Orlet, Dynalite, Baja series, these all work like that. Ellen Chrome, again, as a, as a for instance, offers the shortest flash duration at the highest output. So you should try not to turn them down when you're, you're, you're trying to stop something fast. Here are the units tested. I only have one Godox unit, um, and I'll get to why I only have one when I have all this other stuff. But I also tried the Orlet uh, Rovelite 400 Pro, the Orlet Rovelite 601, the Orlet Quick 450, which is an AC power only unit. Then I tried a whole bunch of Elenchrom monoblocks, the 1200RX, the EL500, which is an oldie but goodie, the 600RX, the 300RX, which are now both discontinued, the Elenchrom BRX, uh, I, BRX I500, which is a current unit. And then finally, I tried the brand new Dynalite B5, which is a battery unit, and then the Dynalite A6. And last but not least, the Dynalite Power Pack AP1600 combined with its bi tube head called the AH4000. Um, so, of all that stuff that I tested today in my garage, Boom, number one rank for both power and flash duration is the Dynalite Arena system, which is no great surprise. Um, so when you combine the AP1600, which is a 1600 watt second power pack, with its matched AH4000 by tube head, 
there is really no equal to flash duration. Uh, it does everything great. Um, this thing puts out 1600 watt seconds of power. The flash duration for each pop is a very consistent 1 hundredth of a second um, at full power. If you turn it down to half power, you get to 55 hundredth of a second with half second recycle. So that's 800 watts. Imagine that. It's pretty amazing. And then finally, if you go to quarter power, you get all the way down to 1 73 hundredth of a second, which is about one in a 0.1 to 0.2 second recycle. So an output of 400 watt seconds. I want to point out that this system is only AC powered. There's no way to do a battery on this bad boy unless it's like a diesel generator. But in a perfect world, each, each uh, power pack would require a 20 amp circuit to be give optimum uh, results. And, you know, this is what I use for basketball in humongous arenas. Uh, use four heads for basketball typically, and then either six to eight for hockey. So nobody even came close. This is the best possible option for getting short duration for sports photography and for pours as well. Uh, number two through six is all Ellen Chrome all day long in terms of flash duration ranking. The shortest flash duration of all the Ellen Chrome units that I tested is one thirty-two hundredth of a second at full power, and that's a three hundred watt second head. Uh, the next one, number three, is the six hundred RX, and the guts of this thing are the same as the old six hundred S unit, which does not have a digital back, just has a slider, but they're identical. And that's one twenty-six hundredth flash duration at full power at six hundred watt seconds. I want to point out too that the advertised uh, flash duration of these units is actually twenty-two hundredth of a second, and Ellen Chrome consistently does better than what their specs say, which I really appreciate because when you buy something from Ellen Chrome and it says it's six hundred watt seconds, it is, and they often cheat in your favor on their flash duration. The Ellen Chrome 500, the old EL500, was an advertised uh, 17 hundredth of a second duration. The ones I measured, I measured five different units uh, of different ages and different flash tube lives, and they were all around the same 1 23 hundredth of a second duration at 500 watt seconds. Amazing. Um, the Ellen Chrome 500 BR, BRXi is, the, is a current model. It's, it's offered... Um, it gave a very consistent 22 hundredth of a second flash duration, 500 watt seconds. And finally, I just had one laying in there. It's not really what I use for arena lighting, but I was blown away that um, the Ellen Crumb 1200 watt second RX unit was giving consistently 15 hundredth of a second flash duration, which is just, that's mind blowing. Um, and these units recycle in about two seconds. So if you really need a lot of power, um, this is actually a pretty viable option for doing basketball or whatever. It's way too slow for volleyball. It's just too fast. It's also way too slow for doing hockey. But um, if you're doing, you know, a big arena and you didn't have a lot of dough and you couldn't afford the Dynalite system, pick, picking up four of these Ellen Crum 1200s would be pretty cool. And last, again, uh, these are all AC powered only. So that's, that's numbers two through six for flash duration ranking. On to number seven is the uh, Orlit Rovelight RT400. I'll just give you a little heads up here. These are only sold by Adorama. These are made by a company in China called Jimbei, which is a direct competitor to Godox. But as, I, as far as I know and understand, these are only available um, in the U.S., under either Adorama or the, um, this is a brand new thing. These are also being direct imported with some changes to uh, Westcott. So you can now buy this unit under the Westcott branding. The Westcott is better. It has um, the same flash duration, but what's cool about the Westcott is it actually has a daylight balanced modeling light instead of an, uh, they use for some stupid reason, it, the, uh, the Kelvin rating is 3,200 on these which is really dumb to make an LED and then make the LED be tungsten, but that's what they did. So if you buy the thing from uh, Adorama, it's going to be a tungsten flash, or it's going to be a tungsten um, emitting LED for a modeling lamp. If you're going to use it for basketball, it doesn't matter. You're going to turn that off anyway. But anyway, it was pretty impressive. The little Orlet Rovelight RT400 came in at 1,000th of a second flash duration, which is really great. 
This unit is ideal for doing high school basketball. So if you wanted to pick up two of these and start shooting games, get yourself some tall stands or clamp onto a, a railing up high, you could really make a dent. Uh, at half power, the, uh, sh the flash duration gets a little shorter at 1 hundredth of a second. And at quarter power, you're in Ellencrum range, which is 23 hundredth of a second, which is pretty cool. And by the way, for most high school gyms, um, a quarter power is going to be about right. So these come with really good batteries, and if you were at quarter power, they'd last for probably two or three games. But they do also offer an AC power adapter, which is kind of cool. And these are a lot less expensive than the, um, the counterpart made by uh, Godox. So on we go. Number eight, the Orlite Rovelite Quick 450. Now this is a strictly AC power unit. Um, it uh, measured out consistently at like 8 20th of a second which is respectable for a, a unit that costs 200 bucks. It's, uh, if you're looking for an El Cheapo way to light up an arena, a small you know, gym in a high school, um, especially for like student photographers, this would be really cool. You know, for 800 bucks plus reflectors and clamps and you know, some pocket wizards, you could actually build a system on a budget that would be pretty cool. Um, number nine, the Orlet Rovelite RT601. This is an older unit um, that does not have uh, TTL, but for doing this kind of work and you know for shooting basketball, you wouldn't need it anyway. Very respectable, 900th of a second flash duration at full power. Um, this does um, decrease pretty radically as you go down, and I didn't put these numbers in here, but they're pretty astounding. If you go to half power on this unit, you go to 2200th of a second. If you go to quarter power, you're at 5,500th of a second. And believe it or not, if you go to eighth power, this unit goes all the way down to 15,900th of a second. So really 1 16,000th of a second flash duration. It is absolutely the best buy for doing small uh, uh, work. If you go all the way down to um, 1 32nd power, you're going to get uh, one fifty-five thousandth of a second duration. If you had about eight of these units, um, you could actually literally use these to do pours. Uh, if you were working for like Anheuser Busch or Coca-Cola, this would be a legitimate way to achieve great pour photography. Um, so if that's your after that, this would be cool. But really, for the money, these are like three hundred bucks a piece, which is insane with the battery. Um, again, this is about the best deal going uh, for doing basketball, especially. Number 11, the Godox. Uh, it says good because the, 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 <laughs> my uh, spelling correction is, is, is doing a good job. This is the Godox uh, AD400 Pro, which is a newer unit, um, but it doesn't have great duration. It's 700th of a second duration at full power. Um, and uh, when you turn that one down, um, you have to go all the way to quarter power. For some reason, when you go to half power, it stays at 700 of a second. But when you go to eighth power, it drops down to one two thousandth of a second. So if you're, if you're going to try and use this for basketball in high school, definitely go to quarter power. You're going to get a much better uh, result. Uh, you won't have all the blur and stuff in your pictures. And uh, number 12, um, the Dynalite B5 uh, was all the way down to 4 50th of a second flash duration at 500, 500 watt second output. This is a battery powered unit or there's an AC power adapter. However, this unit is what I use for most of my portrait work and my wedding photography, seniors, all that kind of stuff. Part of this is because it's the most consistent for color and power output. So if you shoot five or six images, in a very quick succession. Um, they're all gonna be the same light and the same color temperature exactly. So the output's very consistent. This is the best option, in my opinion, for wedding and portrait shooters. This is not a very popular unit. It's kind of pretty much new. Um, Dynalite is um, a rebranded Rime Light unit from Korea. They make excellent gear. Um, I really like this stuff. So this is what I use for my personal work when I'm not doing uh, extreme sports photography where I have to stop action, but this is not a good choice for, you know, doing, um, uh, like basketball and stuff. Uh, I will say though, if you go take the B5 down, um, 
and you get it down to half power, it's one thousandth of a second. So if you're going to use a B5 for basketball, it'll work fine. Just make sure you're at half power or less, and you'll do great. Number 13, uh, kind of a disappointment, but it's kind of for good reason. The Dynelite A6 is a really, really inexpensive 600 watt second mount block head. It requires AC power only. There's no battery option. The flash duration on these is really pretty poor at 3 50th of a second. However, this unit's made for studio work. Um, so it's really a great um, way to work when you're doing tabletop work you're shooting still lifes, or if you're shooting art like sculpture or paintings or something like that, these have 300 watt modeling lamps. So you can actually see what you're doing while you're working in a studio situation. Um, these are great lights, just not for shooting sports. I would not recommend these to shoot any kind of sport ever, even if you turn them down. They're just too slow, but for things that aren't moving, they're a really good deal. The meter that made all this testing possible today, I really appreciate Sekonic making this meter. Um, it's called the L858D U uh, light meter. Um, it measures flash duration, which still amazes me. Um, in the past, when I've had to try to do this way back, you had to use an oscilloscope connected to like a computer. Um, horrible. Like you got to be in a lab kind of a situation in order to do flash duration prior to this meter being invented. So I so appreciate Sekonic. Um, you know, making this meter, um, maybe it was just made for me because I don't know anybody else that would ever need this or want it for that matter, but it's really cool that they did. I very much appreciate it. And um, that's it. So off we go back into the outro. All right. So if you're still with me, I hope this wasn't a huge, massive waste of your time. Um, if you don't have access to this uh, Sekonic meter that I use to do all this testing in my nasty garage today, um, Back in the day when I worked for Sports Illustrated, I did a lot of basketball for them. We had a way of testing flash duration. It's kind of funny, actually. And uh, what you do is you get a buddy to go out on the court, and they do this with their hands as fast as they can. And then while they're doing that, you pop, the, you pop a frame. And then what you do is you zoom in on the fingertips, and you kind of see how much movement and ghosting there is on the fingertips. So if you don't have access to the meter like I did today, um, that's the next best thing. Obviously, I didn't test every light that's available right now. I just tested what was in my garage. Um, so I didn't mean to slight anybody by not testing like white lightnings but or Profoto for that matter. But typically, um, when you're talking about doing really, really short duration work and you need light that's going to stop action, you're gonna be using Allen Chrome or you're gonna be using the Dynelight uh, pack system uh, that I mentioned with the bi-tube heads. In the old days, back in the old days, Speedatron was also a, a really you know, popular way to go. They still make a 2400 watt second power pack with a, a quad tube head. However, if you turn that thing up to full power, the flash duration is a measly 1100th of a second. So the Dynelight just smokes that and then some um, in order to get really good short duration out of those speedo packs, you have to like turn them way down. And by the time you do all that, you may as well just buy Allen Chrome or, or multiple Allen Chromes. Uh, so uh, I've lit arenas with lots of Allen Chrome 500s before. I've also lit arenas where I've taken um, multiple sets and uh, like I'll put eight Allen Chromes up in an arena that is very bright. Um, and that's the last thing that you know you need to kind of understand is that you've got to get over ambient in order for this to work. So if you just simply use fast light in a bright place, you're still going to have ghosting because you're going to have to sync your flat. Your camera's going to sync at like 200 or 250th of a second. And if you can't get over the ambient enough, you're still going to have motion blur from the shutter speed you're using. But if you can get enough light onto the court or the ice where you're way beyond the ambient light, this is where you're gonna to start to see the magic of short duration flash photography. So, if you're still with me, it's amazing. This is maybe the most boring video I've ever made. Um, I'm sure that six or seven of you worldwide will really appreciate me doing this video. Um, I'm hoping that photography teachers might use this in class. Uh, nobody talks about flash duration. It's really important and um, I'm not a big fan of Godox because they pretty much suck in terms of flash duration. They just don't do a good job with it. Um, the Orlet stuff, which is actually Jinbei from China, is quite good. Um, 
and it's less expensive than Godox. So if you're kind of just breaking in and you found this crazy video that I made and you don't have any lights yet and you're gonna get into like doing like real photography with real lights, I would encourage you as an entry level to go right for Orlet. Uh, the Rove Light stuff from Adorama is quite good and it's cheap. So um, hope this is helpful. I'm uh, Sony Artisan Patrick Murphy Racy saying if you're still there, thank you for watching. Have a great day.